Now, through your YouTube channel, you were uh, quite involved in the uh, same-sex marriage campaign when we had the uh, postal survey. You interviewed uh, several yes. uh, people who uh, were advocating a, a no vote. Uh, why did you decide to get involved in the campaign? Wow. Okay, so I had a self-imposed deadline as to when I was going to start um, That Guy Media, um, and it just happened in that same fortnight, same-sex marriage postal vote got announced. So it wasn't a planned, you know, uh, it wasn't a planned thing in a sense, but um, I guess it became important to me when over three dozen of my gay friends, um, okay, as a, as a libertarian and a cultural libertarian, my first thought was, look, hey, we live in a secular democracy. If Australians are going to vote that way, what's the deal? Um, but I had over three dozen gay friends tap me on the shoulder telling me they were voting no in a very short space of time and that I should take it a lot more seriously because of the tentacles of cultural Marxism, CSE, which were, you know, safe schools programs, which we were told would not be uh, um, in the same ballpark as that uh, and was. Um, that there were two leaked bills and both of them explained genderless marriage, not um, uh, male and male or female and female. Um, and, you know, it, it really, re I wanted to explore the other side. Like why, why would gay guys, straight people, people who've been through this before, people in other countries who've suffered because of weaponized human rights commissions um, straight off the back of, of this, what happens to families? I just thought let's explore the unpopular side because, um, I only have to turn on Channel 10, Channel 7, you know, ABC uh, to get the yes campaign. And, uh, and and that's that's sort of the rabbit warren that I went down, um, looking at the unpopular truths and things attached to that that thing. Um, yeah, it, it, I, I just guess by, by virtue of the fact that we weren't getting a whole lot of no media um, in the mainstream media, I wanted to see how important this thing really was and I came to the conclusion that it was extremely important to the substructure of, of, of Western civilization and um, because it was built off the back of nearly 40 years of cultural Marxism and activists that we we weren't really aware were there until they started showing their faces most of them let's use their language you know straight white and privileged uh, university leftists um, screaming loud most of my gay friends uh, didn't care at all. Uh, and, and I found that quite fascinating. <laughs> but Australia voted yes, uh, overwhelmingly 61.6%. We now have um, same-sex marriage uh, legal. Um, I've, from my point of view, I felt it was a bit too much for people on the no side to say that, you know, everything uh, hinged on this that you know if if same-sex marriage became legal then you know the cultural Marxist is one because uh, where I live it's it's pretty much middle Australia and I wasn't surprised when the, uh, from the conversations I had that uh, it was an electorate that, that voted yes and they voted yes you know not because you know they're you know influenced by cultural Marxists, like if somebody came up to them and said, oh, we should, you know, abolish Australia Day or, you know, let all the boats in, they'd be, uh, you know, dead against that. Uh, so I really think that, um, and also there was a lot of people, you know, active in the Yes campaign who aren't, you know, cultural Marxists, they were conservative libertarian, like, yes, there were the, the radical leftists who, you know, were, were pushing this, but I don't think it's a victory for them. They they might claim it as their own, but also what I've noticed is that after you know they've claimed this victory, they've moved on to complaining about um, something else. So uh, I I don't think that you know the yes vote is you know it's the um, disaster that so, some were making out. It's it's happened. There's you know there there there's still a lot of you know other battles that can be won. Look. Um, yeah, look, and I, I would I would politely disagree with you. I, I think what, one of the statements you made is uh, that people weren't affected by cultural Marxism. I think anybody who's uh, basically grown up in our age bracket or you know ten years older are deeply affected by cultural Marxism and critical theory. I mean that 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 uh, and the intersectional nonsense that has basically become pervasive in all mainstream media. It's a, it's 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 everywhere. It's in everything. It's in the way we speak about. Um, 
Indigenous Australia, about immigrants, about any subject. It, there's a there's a there's a critical theory nature to everything that we read and touch nowadays in Australia. So, um, and look, in terms of how it plays out, look, one of the reasons that we're doing what we're doing is that I wanted to get ahead of what I would call the alt-white in Australia. There are certain um, alternative pundits out there that are very white nationalistic in their in their Richard Spencer style uh, monologues, and I thought they cannot win. They cannot win. They they can't be the ones representing alternative news in Australia because otherwise it'll be over before it even begins. Um, but you know, I, I think. The reality is only, I can't remember what I was going to say about that, but only time will tell what's going to happen. What's going to happen. Um, because if you look at Canada and Bill C-16, if you look at what happens in any con- country where the biological um, parent is changed to legal parent, you look at how people talk about and educate things. Like if you've studied safe schools and um, the global CSE agenda, you'll be completely aware that things that mature adults could discuss and probably wouldn't um, are being shoved down the necks of a lot of children right now. A lot of the scary, scary things that uh, we're looking at with cultural Marxism in Australia are going to be all that much harder to wind back now uh, same-sex marriage is being legalised. Because we've got to remember, it's not same-sex marriage. It's genderless marriage. Okay, so for me, if it was male and male or female and female, it wouldn't have been as scary. But we have passed in Parliament now in the same, like within 24 hours, zero legal protections for um, people of uh, all top five major religions have a problem with gay marriage. Uh, There's no religious protections from them. There's no conscientious objections. Uh, There is no ability to, to be able to voice your opinions in the open uh, if you disagree and you know five million australians is, is is nothing to be sneezed at by the way um to me that's the biggest concern it's not whether or not you know uh, two lesbians or two gay guys can get married it's whether or not you disagree with that you're allowed to say anything about it um so look time will tell how this will play out uh, I think unlike a lot of countries, though, like Ireland, like Canada, we actually have precedent. And again, what I was going to say is the reason we do this, rather than just replaying international uh, alt media shows all day, every day, is because Australians speak a very different language. We weren't born in civil war. We weren't born in uh, a revolution. Okay, We have a very different vernacular in the way we communicate. And even though the principles are the same, you know, maybe things won't get as bad as they have across Canada and across Europe and the United States. Maybe the intersectionality and the division won't be as bad. Maybe free speech will be protected um, somehow. But, you know, I don't see it. I don't see it. Because I can tell you from a lot of my gay friends who, who, who I speak to, they did not want transgender people represented with them. They didn't want to be lumped in with the, with this Marxist collective of LGBTQI+. They're just gay guys who love their partners or gay girls who love their partners. So, yeah, look, I, I do think it's, I do think we, if this last 90 days did anything, it probably educated people about subjects that they had no idea about to begin with. And I think Australians are probably going to be very much more acutely aware of where to from here. And I hope we don't go the way of Canada, for example. So, yeah, let's see. We'll just see. <laughs> well, well, for me, it's it, because, you know, there may be these other issues that may come up in the future. It wasn't enough for me to say, oh, sorry, you know, you can't, you know, do that. You can't have a wedding because, you know, there's all there's these future uh, possibilities. It's... Uh, and f- for me, the the vote was still about you know same sex marriage. That's that that's all all that it was about. And yes, like I like you do share concerns about you know freedom of speech, conscientious object uh, objectors. Mm-hmm. But 
they're all you know separate issues like i'm i I try to look at issues on their merits and objectively as possible and i think that's what the majority of uh australians did and you know i think they're they're definitely going to do you you think do you think the majority of australians did you you don't think the majority of australians voted emotionally no i think i think think they looked at it I think they just looked at look, looked at the the question on its own. If there if there is you know going to be you know in five years time you know uh, attacks on free speech or you know even more uh, a more radical version of safe schools, I, I you know I doubt that you know the Australian people are going to you know just accept that. Well, okay, four years ago they accepted it though, and 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 this is. This is the thing. One thing I think this... Okay, so Safe Schools was snuck in under the cover of night as an anti-bullying program. And just like a lot of CSE programs around the world, they're snuck in as uh, anti-pregnancy programs, anti-domestic violence programs, you know, anti-bullying programs and things like that. And it's not till a couple of years later that the public realise there's radical gender theory being taught to their young children uh, that they get really frustrated. So, look, I, I think... If this plebiscite did anything, it exposed people to a huge amount of issues that have been snuck in under the cover of night activists and ivory tower intellectuals who have been operating from La Trobe University and others, for example. Um, they, they, they've been exposed to things that they didn't know existed before. So, you know, good came out of it, in a sense. Um, but yeah, look, we'll, we'll, we'll agree to disagree. I, I, think, I think at the end of the day, um, we have precedent in every other country, the other 24 countries that have actually done this, where human rights commissions have been weaponized to anybody who has any um, disagreement, uh, conscientious objection to um, uh, gay marriage. Just just call it that, right? Uh, that in and of itself needs to be protected because all top five major religions in the world won't change their position just because the state said so. And I think you are going to see a lot of the same horrible activists who start raising hell for religious institutions, um, demanding that they should be married in a church, demanding that they should be able to use any service that they that they should so desire. And I think you're going to see a bunch of test cases unfold next year, which will um, probably make Australians think twice about what we did. Because it wasn't about Okay, we were presented, should same-sex couples be allowed to marry? That was the ballot paper. Sure, absolutely, why not? That's how most Australians voted. What they didn't vote for was the bill that passed. They didn't vote for genderless marriage. They didn't vote for transgender marriage. Okay, that postal survey did not say anything about transgender marriage. And anybody who um, realises that gender dysphoria is actually a, a psychological issue, like... Uh, any psychologist worth their medal. Um, you know, I, I, I really think that is a profound difference to what the Australians were asked to vote on. So, you know, I, I think we're going to be watching. We're going to be watching very closely. And this is not out to hurt my gay friends at all. In fact, I probably conferred to them far more than um, I would any other identity groups um that i was talking to because i just wanted to make sure i wasn't pushing too hard too far <laughs> and too early um you know and they were saying go for it go for it you know no this is what this is fine well you know we're not offended by your speech and you know this 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 is going to be an interesting year ahead i think for test cases so we may disagree on that, but let's wait and see how it plays out. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm still, you know, optimistic about the uh, Australian people. Otherwise, you know, I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't be, you know, out here because it's because it's not just me doing this. It's not just to convince people. It's also, you know, to give you know other Australians a voice as well. And you know, based on uh, the the feedback that I receive, and also based on you know other polls that I've seen on other issues. And if there's one thing we learn from the same-sex marriage uh, postal survey is that the polls are right. The, the Australian people will def- uh, definitely, you know, rally to defend against, you know, anything anything else that the, the cultural left uh, try to throw at us. Yeah, yeah, and, and more, more so now than the last 40 years. And so that's the positive that came out of the same-sex marriage thing. I think people really got to see, you know, like it was amazing to go to, to be a part of the Milo event watching you know three and a half thousand australians basically 
from 12 to 91 flock around Milo and it, and just from all backgrounds of all walks of life, just sick and tired of the nanny state, the progressive left, the cultural Marxism that has just permeated every institution to the mainstream media, to the universities. It was an incredible thing to behold. And um, it heartened me. And you're right, this is not about two guys just talking and, and trying to convince the world. This is about, to me, I see myself as an explorer. And uh, anybody who's been red-pilled and realized that they re we really don't know that much. You know, the only way to really know is to study the life out of something and not take it off the back of a slogan. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think Australians are waking up. But they're waking up very differently to other countries as well. And it's, um, that's what all of this is about. It's, it's about exploring issues together. And like George Carlin said, well, you know, let's paraphrase. If I say to my wife, do you want to go for coffee? If there's 26 locations within four blocks of my house to coffee, then how many more solutions to love and economics and war and, and all the rest? You know, um, I'm, I'm so tired of the two party, the two newspapers, the two, you know, the left, the right divided. It's, it's all false. It's all a false paradigm. And Australians are waking up to that. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.